There are usually certain sounds and smells that transport me right back to my childhood. For me, the sound of fried chicken frying in hot oil does that just for me. There's this unmistakable warm and homey feeling you get when you bite down on a well-seasoned piece of chicken. Besides, isn't that what food should do? Make you feel warm and homey? That's exactly what's happening today with a recipe I like to call my crispy, crunchy cauliflower. And of course, everything we do, you know it's gotta be simple, delicious, easy, and just good food, so let's get started. All right, first things first is, I'm gonna put the green beans off into the oven. Now, I am using fresh green beans for this, so I'm just gonna put them onto a sheet tray. They've been nice and, and rinsed. And let's make love to these green beans. Let's really sort of infuse them with lots of great flavor that's gonna help when they roast up. So the first thing is I've got some extra virgin olive oil that I'm just gonna put on to the green beans just like this. All right, and then with clean hands, you wanna get in here, mix the green beans up. That way all of the green beans get surface time and good contact with the oil just like this. All right, so the first thing is we're gonna put a little salt. All right, I've also got some black pepper that we're gonna put on them as well. I think the green beans could benefit from some garlic flavor as well. So I'm gonna put on some granulated garlic powder, just like this. And then the last ingredient is a very simple ingredient, but necessary in a situation like this, and this is brown sugar. So I've got some light brown sugar. I'm gonna to toss onto the green beans as well. And then we're just gonna to toss them together just to make sure everybody's happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these green beans right off into the oven to cook up. All right, now that the green beans are off in the oven, I'm going to get ready to preheat our oil because you gotta make sure that your oil is nice and hot to make this cauliflower. So, skillet on a high flame, and then I'm gonna pour in some canola oil. All right, now that the oil is preheating, I'm gonna go ahead and season up our cauliflower floret. So, these are just fresh florets, fresh cauliflower that I just sort of chopped down the size into a little like meaty bite-sized pieces. We're gonna season this very simply. Here is some pepper. I'm also gonna throw in some salt to the situation as well. And then two things I have to have whenever I do this. The first is gonna be some garlic powder and then some onion powder. So those are gonna go in here just like that. All right, I'm just gonna get in here with my hands, right, and just give this a toss, just to make sure the cauliflower is nice and incorporated. All right, and then look, I've got some vegan half and half. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this in, just to help everything come together. All right, and then I'll stir it all together. And then I'm just gonna grab some regular all-purpose flour. I'm gonna put the all-purpose flour into a bowl, because I'm doing like a nice dredging situation just to make sure this cauliflower stays nice and crispy. Alongside the all-purpose flour, a little bit of cornstarch. I believe the two go hand in hand whenever you're gonna fry anything. So I always do one part cornstarch to two parts flour. And then let's just give it a good stir just to make sure it's all incorporated. And then you know the deal, right? So we're gonna take this well-seasoned cauliflower and we're gonna drop it right into the flour, just like this. I'm just gonna use a spoon to dredge it, and then I'm going to fry it up. Oil's nice and hot. I'm just gonna dump off the excess and then drop the cauliflower florets right into the oil. So I'm just gonna cook the cauliflower until it's golden brown. It takes a couple of minutes. While the cauliflower is cooking, don't forget those green beans are in the oven. Also, I made this wonderful pasta and rice pilaf. Let me show you how I did it. I'll start by sauteing onion and garlic until the onions are translucent. Then I'll add in the rice and crushed pasta pieces and cook until they're golden brown. I'll throw in some vegetable stock and a good pinch of kosher salt and black pepper 
and cook until the liquid evaporates. Once that happens, I'll add a lid and let the rice sit for about 10 minutes. I'll fluff the rice with a fork for the most tender pilaf you've ever had. All right, see, I told you how easy it was, all right? Rice pilaf was so simple to make. Our green beans can come out of the oven as well. Ooh, look at that, perfectly cooked. All right, and I'm gonna bring over, here is that wonderful rice pilaf that we made that's ready to go. Now, here's how we do all of this and put it together for the most amazing presentation. So I'm gonna grab some of the green beans and put them on one side of the plate. Then I'm gonna carefully place this cauliflower right in the middle. Look at that, it's crispy and crunchy the way it's supposed to be. All right, and then the last thing is I'm just gonna grab some of our, my mouth is watering. <laughs> some of the rice pilaf. Right, this is the rice and the pasta with the onion and garlic. And it's great because you can certainly use like your leftover pasta to make this. I'm gonna put that right over here. So there's only one thing left to do and that's to give it a taste and see how everything goes. So let's start with the pilaf. Let's see. This one, immediately. The rice is kind of creamy in here. Very, very savory. The onion and garlic is a great flavor base. Mmm, it's really good. You know what I love? A green bean with some integrity, and that certainly has some. Delicious, and you already know the cauliflower is gonna be. One point. Mmm. I don't know about you, this is what I'm talking about. Flavors that transport you right back to your childhood. You have to give these recipes a try. You know exactly where they're gonna be on my website. It's www.dariuscooks.tv. Listen, y'all, there's two things I have to tell you, as I always do. Food is my life, life, it's my food. And so next time, I gotta wish you happy cooking from my heart to yours. Bye, y'all.